So let's do a quick and dirty ignition system bench test because the time to find out if your sparker is sparking is before you put it on the engine, if at all possible. And because we're dealing with a conventional distributor, it is. So what we're gonna do is duplicate the car's electrical system or the engine's electrical system uh, using a jump box, this vise, and a drill, and a distributor. So just to give you some background on this, look, you wanna see, see how a YouTube professional does things? Look here, you're being supported by a roll of paper towels. Yeah, all the fancy equipment. So here's the story with this. Uh, this is for our scrap pile mystery pole barn find 3D3. And the mission with this engine is to put it together with as many of the original parts as it came with as possible. So it came with this vintage Madler Unilite distributor. So we know based on, based on the history that we can gather and the, the, the vintage of the other parts that are on it, that this whole build, this engine was last on the road, last functional, probably around the middle 1980s, which means that at a bare minimum, this is a 40 year old ignition module. Um, now these Mallory Unilites, I cannot speak for the new ones. I, I don't know anything about the new ones. But I do know that these old ones, and they, they introduced these back in, I'm going to say 1975, were fantastic. They're like bulletproof. It uses, it uses an electric, uh, uh, a light beam, and passes through there. Let me see, where's the rotor? Here's the rotor. So the rotor has these little slots in it. And as this thing spins, it breaks the light beam and triggers a spark. So we want to see if this thing is going to work. It's been exposed to the elements. It's been sitting out in the elements since Reagan was in office. <laughs> is it going to work? I don't know, but we're going to find out. So this is the original distributor it came with. Uh, it's, a, it's a points distributor. This was actually a, a, a conversion kit. I know that they don't make them as a separate kit anymore, and I have to buy the whole distributor. But this was, like today's uh, Petronix, that's what this was 40 years ago. So, this is the original distributor. I gotta give this thing a little quick cleanup. And I'm gonna do a couple of these things that I don't necessarily, that don't really fit this, and I don't necessarily recommend that you do, but I'll just go through them real quick because this is what I'm doing. Um, when I put a car together and its primary uh, its primary purpose is just acceleration. Okay, that's all I care about. And honestly, that's honestly all I care about with something like this. How well does it accelerate? I automatically delete vacuum advance. Now, don't do that if you drive it on a regular, if you see a lot of highway use and stuff like that. The vacuum advance does serve a purpose. But for me and my sensibilities and the way I build things and I like to simplify stuff, I delete the vacuum advance. Uh, again, unless it's a driver, okay? So on this, uh, I already, I just did this. I should have, should have waited until it was filmed, uh, film. But I've removed the vacuum advance canister. Um, I removed the bracket that holds it in place, cut it because this is what indexes the distributor cap. So you need that little piece on a Chrysler. Uh, off the vacuum advance bracket to index the cap, keep it from moving around. So I did that already, and I put a little tack weld right there, okay? And that's just to keep the breaker plate from moving. So now it's locked out. Now there's one other thing I'm gonna do with this. Um, I'll do it right now, just because. And that has to do with the advance weights because I want, the, I want the mechanical advance to come in. Yeah. You, you notice I can never make a video without dropping something. I want the mechanical advance to come in as quickly as possible. Uh, come on, all right. So we've got our advance weights down there. You see the advance weights? And I've already done a video about this. Um, I forgot what it was called. Uh, how to make how to make your, your engine jump when you hit the gas or something like that and it had to do with setting up the mechanical advance for like instant throttle response so now this is going to apply very similarly if you're dealing with a ford distributor because the ford distributors are set up the same way as this and if it's a general motors distributor including an hei you're going to have the advance weights on top so you take the rotor off and there's the advance weights 
but this applies to all of them, okay? So if you look down in here, you're gonna see there's a, a skinny spring and a thick spring, okay? And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our handy dandy needle nose pliers and we're gonna grab the thick spring and we're gonna brutalize it. Come on. There we go. Okay, and we're gonna delete that. So now we have, check the motion here, yes, okay. So now we have only one spring on there and it's the lighter of the two springs. So as soon as this thing starts, right after it starts, like right off idle, 1200, 1500 RPM or whatever, that advance, those advanced switches will be all the way open as opposed to waiting until like 2500, 3000 RPM with that heavy spring in there. So that's all the modifications we're gonna do with this right now. Now, let's put this back. Um, do I wanna clean this up before we do this? No, let's do it dirty and I'll clean it all up later because I don't even know if this is gonna work, to be honest with you, I mean, this, this is a test. This isn't one of those, uh, you know, pre, pre set up demonstration things. This is just, I'm gonna break out the camera and just film what I would do naturally, normally. All right, I'll put the screw back in here. Screw back in here. Um, oh, we gotta talk about the wiring. I, I, I know this, will, I know some of you guys will find this handy. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you, if you ever come across a unit like this, or any accessory, like for instance, ignition related accessory, like for instance, the tachometer, there's a universal color code, okay? So this, this unit has three wires, and you've got a red, a green, and a black. All right, so the black is always gonna be ground. The red is always gonna be positive of the coil, or, or 12 volts, but you can hook it to the positive of the coil. And the green is always the negative to the coil. Now, a tagometer will have those same black, red, and green wires, and it'll also have a white wire, and the white wire is for your lights. So when you turn your lights on, the, the tagometer lights up. That's like a, a universal ignition accessory wiring code. All right, now, we have our drill. What we're gonna do is we're gonna chuck this thing up in the drill like so. So now if you're dealing with a General Motors distributor, you're gonna have to knock the, uh, the gear off the bottom of it. You knock the roll pin out, slide the gear off, and then you can chuck it up in the drill just like this. Okay. Now, we're gonna take our distributor and put it in our vise, which is taking the place of our engine block. And let's see. There you go. All right. Now, for this to function, we need the rotor. So let's get the rotor on here. Okay. And now we gotta hook up our wires. So this is the coil that came with this distributor. I don't know if I really wanna use this one or not. I, I have no idea if it's gonna work or not, but let's, let's figure that it, it it worked when this thing was last parked because it, it got parked because it exploded the drivetrain. So we'll assume that this thing is going to be good. So here's our, uh, so this one's marked distributor, All right? So that's going to be the green, the negative. I, I always spaz when I'm trying to, I'm, you know, you try to be like uh, smooth when you're making videos and I always spaz out. Okay. Wrench to tighten it. No, we don't need a stick and wrench. All right. Uh, so then this is the positive. So this is going to get our red. Okay, you keep dropping things. Now, 
To complete all of this, we need our ignition source or our, our, our battery source. So we have this jammy right here and we're gonna ground our engine block and we're also going to have to ground our uh, ignition system. So we'll just clip this to this. Okay, it should be a should be a good ground. Okay, and now we're going to have to supply 12 volts to the positive on the coil. Okay, and. Let's lay that down. And here is our plug wire. Okay, so if I've done everything right, let's turn this thing on. So if I've done everything right and this thing functions correctly, we should get a spark. Oh yeah. Wow. I, wa I want you guys to see what an incredibly good spark looks like. And that's that's out of that, I mean, just dime a dozen, I guess that's like an 18,000 volt coil or thereabouts. Let me fire this thing up and, and not zap myself. I'm, I'm going to tell you that that is an impressive spark. Get back on a roll of paper towels. I, I'm surprised by that. I didn't think I'd get such a, a blue snappy spark. And that's out of a low performance coil. The source of the switching doesn't make any difference. It would make the same spark if it was points or if it was uh, any other trigger. It doesn't make any difference what triggers the coil. But the, the voltage into it, which is a full 12 volts, normally it would get fed through a resistor while it was running. So that's more or less the start circuit you, that you just saw. Um, I'm impressed. So I don't know if I'm gonna use that coil or not. I like to use those, the big yellow coils. I have a couple of them. In fact, I've got one sitting ready to bolt on this thing right now. But just testing the parts that this came with looks good to me. So a basic setup like this is good for a lot more than just testing ignition modules or coils. You can go all the way and test the entire ignition system. Uh, you can add a ballast resistor into it. You can, if you don't use a ballast resistor, you could use the resistor wire and ignition switch out of, you know, your car. Um, you could test anything. You can go to the next step, put a distributor cap on it, test each of the wires. You could test each of the plugs. You could try different coils. There's so many things you could do with this. Uh, back when I used to turn wrenches, you know, that was my thing. I had a little area set up with all of the various odds and ends I would need to test ignition systems like that. And everything had an alligator click, clips and quick disconnects. And I had a little area to test alternators and charging systems. You know, the same thing. Saves a lot of trouble when you can figure out your problems on the bench instead of putting it on a car and waiting for things to screw up. So, success! I think we did good here. I wasn't expecting it to work that well, but it did. So now I just got to clean this distributor up and drop it in. And I'm probably not going to use that coil. It, it works fine, but you can see when I pulled the wire away from the ground, I got more than let's say a half inch or so, and then the, st the spark starts to become erratic. So that's just indicative of the fact that it's a, a low performance coil, it's just a normal coil. So you should, I should have been able to go three quarters of an inch, almost an inch away. And that's what I would get with a high output coil, like one of them big yellow goofy things that I like to use. I don't know why I like to use them. It's just, I'm a creature of habit, right? Um, but any high performance coil will give you a similar result. So that's it. Um, she checked out. Now we just got to clean this distributor up. Uh, I have to cover this slot where the vacuum events used to be. And then and I'll do that with just like a, a strip of aluminum and some JB weld 
and that's it. But again, don't pull your vacuum in advance if you drive your stuff on a regular basis. This is just a toy. It's a hot rod toy. So that's why I eliminate things like vacuum in advance from them. Um, and that's it. I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.